This class is brought to you by the LA Care and Blue Shield Promise Community Resource Centers. The centers are a place to help you be active, healthy, and informed. We hope you enjoy this virtual class. Hello, my name is Sonia Guzman. Today we are going to talk about sugar. And what we're going to do is we are going to play a game that involves sugar. Now by sugar, what I'm talking about is this little white stuff, which is known as refined sugar. Before we play our game, let's talk about this little white stuff, refined sugar, and why it is not recommended that we eat refined sugar. So we know that uh, this type of sugar, it can cause cavities, and we know that it is also not good for our bodies. Why is it not good for our bodies? Well, it's not good because this kind of sugar is known, to, is known as something that has zero nutritional value. It's called empty calories. And what that means is that when we eat refined sugar, such as this one, we really don't get any vitamins, nutrients, fiber, really nothing beneficial into our bodies. And so it's not recommended that we eat refined sugar. Now, I have to make sure that you understand that we're only talking about refined sugar. Sometimes people say, well, what about fruits and vegetables? They also have sugar. They do. However, the, the sugar in fruits and vegetables is not the same as refined sugar. The fruits and, fruits and vegetables have what is known as natural sugars. And not only do they have natural sugars, but they also have a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals, and they have a lot of fiber. So as long as you eat your fruits and vegetables, the whole fruit versus the juice instead of the juice, then you will be getting a lot of nutrients from your fruits and vegetables. So this is not what we are talking about today. So this other type of sugar that we are talking about, refined sugar. So where do we find this kind of sugar? Well, this is the kind of sugar that you can find in cakes. This is the kind of sugar that you can find in cookies, um, chocolate, right? Some kinds of chocolate. This is also the kind of sugar that you find in a lot of drinks. And so the game that we are going to play today has to do with drinks. I am going to be showing you several types of, several drinks, and you are going to tell me how many of these little cubes of sugar you think each of these drinks contains. Now, before we play our game, I want to tell you first what your limit, daily limit is on this kind of sugar. So if you were to eat foods with this kind of sugar, some of which I just mentioned, your limit, if you are between the ages of two to 18 years of age, your limit would be, can you guess? Your limit is going to be six. Six of these little cubes per day. Now each little cube represents a teaspoon, so your limit, daily limit, will be six teaspoons per day. Why is it important for you to know this? Because as we play our guessing game, you are going to get to see how many of these are the different kinds of drinks, okay? Now, we usually don't just drink drinks throughout the day. We drink our drinks and we eat our food. And many, many of the foods that we eat these days, they actually contain sugar. So think about that as we play our game. Think about just how much sugar is in the drinks versus how many you are recommended per day, okay? Or your limit per day. And see the difference, see if the drinks might even go above and beyond your six daily. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we go into our game, let me also tell you, if you have a little baby brother or sister, okay, less than two years of age, what is their daily limit? What do you think? If yours is six, between the ages of two to 18 years of age, what do you think is the limit for someone below two years of age? Did you say zero? You guessed correctly. Their limit would be zero. We do not want any children less than two years of age eating any refined sugar, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and get started with our game. So the first drink that I am going to show you is a Go-Gurt. Now I realize that this can be a drink, this can also be yogurt, but it's the Go-Gurt. So how much sugar do you think is in one Go-Gurt? I will give you time to guess.
So Gogurt, I'm going to put the name here and then I'm going to put the amount of sugar that is in it, okay? So we're just talking about one Gogurt. How many of these little cubes are in a Gogurt? Two and just a half of this one, so two and a half. Now I know I have three, I don't have half sugar cubes, but two and a half, okay? Just think about this one, imagine that it's cut in half. Okay, chocolate milk. How many of you like chocolate milk? Okay, so we're talking about Nesquik chocolate milk. So here's the picture. Okay, Nesquik chocolate milk. Are you ready for this one? Okay, one bottle of Nesquik chocolate milk has, did you guess six? Six of these little sugar cubes in it, okay? Now remember what I said, six in just the chocolate milk, and that's your daily limit. So that alone right there, right? That's all the sugar you should be eating in the day. So. Wow, that's incredible, right? That's just in the chocolate milk. Think about all this other food that we're still gonna eat, all this sugar that we are eating, okay? Okay, our next drink is High C Fruit Punch. Here's the picture. Okay, a little box of high C fruit punch. How many do you think is in that little box? Did you guess six again? Pretty close, five and a half. Okay, so five and a half in this little tiny box of high C fruit punch. Next one. We have the uh, Minute Maid Pink Lemonade. Now we're talking about the bottle. Here's the picture. Okay, Minute Maid Pink Lemonade. The bottle of pink lemonade has, get ready. Now I'm gonna grab my box because I can't carry them all in my hand. Are you ready? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, should I stop? Can't, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and three quarters of the 17th one. Oh my goodness, almost 17 teaspoons of sugar in just one bottle of lemonade. That's a lot of sugar. All right, you ready for the next one? The next one, a can of Pepsi.
Okay, can of Pepsi. How many did you guess in one can of Pepsi? So this one we have two, four, five, six and seven, eight, nine, and three quarters. So nine, okay, and almost the 10th one. So almost 10 teaspoons of sugar in just one can of Pepsi. And our last drink is the Fanta orange cola or orange soda. So take a guess, here's the picture. Okay, our last one, Fanta Orange. Now this one, we are going to count with me again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, get some more, eight, nine, 10, and one more, 11. So your Fanta Orange, you were talking about 11 teaspoons of sugar, 11 of these little cubes of sugar in just one can of soda. So look at this here, our different drinks that we looked at today, and take a look at the recommendation again over here, okay? This is clearly a lot less than what we are seeing in just our drinks. That's why they say that the biggest amount of sugar that we eat is mostly in our drinks. Even though we have the cakes and the cookies and the chocolate and all of that, this is where we eat or consume a lot of our sugar because we tend to drink a lot of drinks that are sweetened. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure that when we are thirsty, rather than drink these types of drinks, that we are drinking our water. So now that we have talked about sugar, in our drinks, let's go ahead and talk about chocolate. You like chocolate? I personally love chocolate, but chocolate is one of those foods that if we are not very careful, can actually put a lot of this kind of sugar in our diet. So there's actually a type of chocolate that doesn't bring this into our diet, and so that's what I want to talk to you about today. So that next time that you feel like having something sweet, if you feel like having chocolate and not just like a piece of fruit, or, or, you know, a banana, an apple, any kind of fruit really. Um, if you feel like having something like chocolate so that you know what kind of chocolate is actually healthy for you. So the chocolate that we are going to be using today is this chocolate here. This is premium baking chocolate, unsweetened chocolate. We can actually use it for what we will be making, which is our chocolate covered bananas. It's 100% cacao. So if we were to look at the back and look at the ingredients, we would notice that all that it has is unsweetened chocolate. That is it, it doesn't have any other ingredient. So this is important because this is the kind of chocolate that we want to consume, right? The kind that does not have any added sugar. And this kind of chocolate actually, not only does it not have sugar, but it actually has fiber. So the fiber in this chocolate is actually good for our health. It helps to protect us uh, from things like diabetes, it helps to protect us from things like cancer, and it is also good for our bellies. So this is the chocolate that we are going to be using today. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to make some room here so you can see how we are going to make our chocolate covered bananas. Now um, we are going to make the chocolate covered bananas and then what you will want to do after you make your bananas is to put them in the freezer and let them sit in the freezer for a little while so that the, the banana gets cold, the chocolate gets hard, it's on the banana, and you can then enjoy it that way, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bananas. I don't have the, I have them in the refrigerator so that they are at least getting a little bit cool so that when they touch the hot chocolate, it helps for the chocolate to get the chocolate to stick to them. So let me put on my gloves and you at home, before you get cooking, Remember to wash your hands. It's important to wash your hands, 
it's important to wash them properly, okay? So if you can't reach the sink, please make sure you ask your parents or somebody else to help you. Okay, the way we are going to melt, melt our chocolate, we can actually do this in two ways. Some people like to put their chocolate in the microwave. I don't prefer that way. The way that we are going to do it today, we're going to use what's kind of called a double boiler or method, where we would, ideally we would have another pot, but we are just going to use a bowl that we are placing on top of our pan that already has water in it, okay? Our pot here, it already has water in it, and that water has been, was boiling. We turned it down a little bit, but the water is hot. And so what's going to happen is that the hot water is going to start warming up, right? The steam is going to start warming up our bowl here. And when we place the chocolate in the bowl, that is going to help the chocolate to melt. The steam, the warmth is going to help chocolate, the chocolate melt, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and place my chocolate, break it into small pieces, put it in my, in my bowl. Break it into squares. Put this in the trash. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to peel the bananas. And you notice these are a little bit ripe and that's good because they tend to get sweeter as, as, uh, as they get riper. So I'm peeling them, I'm throwing away the peel and then I am going to place these on my board. And then I can actually cut them with a butter knife. I don't need a sharp knife, so this is something that you should be able to do, particularly if you haven't yet learned how to use a sharp knife, okay? So I'm gonna place them here. You can slice your bananas whichever way you'd like. I am just going to Kind of make, leave them in, in larger pieces, only because that way it'll be probably easier, right, to dip them into the chocolate. And then the way that I'm going to dip them into the chocolate, right, because I don't want to dip it with my hand, wanna, uh, I want to make sure I don't run the risk, the risk of getting burned, I'm going to use skewers, okay? So I'm going to place every each piece of banana on a skewer and then I can just dip it into the chocolate. You could even cut them into smaller pieces and place two or three on a skewer. And then instead of dipping, you would just take a spoon and kind of scoop the chocolate onto the banana. You can do it that way as well. So the chocolate is melting, and what I'm gonna do in a little bit, I'm gonna take my spatula, and I'm just going to stir it to help it along the way, right? So that all the chocolate touches the hot surface and all of it melts evenly. Okay, so we have skewered all of our bananas. Now let's go back to our chocolate to make sure that it is melting. So I'm gonna lift the spatula just so you can see, right? That's how the chocolate is melting. Now you can add a little bit of milk to this if you wanted to, make it a little bit, um, you know, a little bit runnier, but we're just going to leave it like this just waiting for our chocolate to melt so that we can go ahead and dip our bananas into the chocolate. And then what we are going to do, we're gonna place them on the parchment paper, right, to keep them from sticking to our mats. And then in the, on the parchment, on, once it's on the parchment paper, then we can put that into the freezer to help them cool off a little bit and 
become yummy, frozen, chocolate-covered bananas. Okay, we are almost there. And you can do this with bananas, you can do this with apples, strawberries, really any fruit that you'd like. You can dip it into chocolate and make it a yummy dessert. Almost there. Now once it's melted, I don't need to leave it on top of this um, pan here because again, if I leave it here and you you know you want to come and dip your bananas here, right? Um, there's a risk of getting burned because this is all hot. So I can actually remove the bowl and place it over here closer to the bananas and then go ahead and just dip the bananas. And bananas are really good for us. They have a lot of minerals, they have vitamins, and they also have fiber. So that's going to be a healthy food. This is going to be a healthy snack or dessert, whatever you want to make of it. And it'll be really, really good. Okay, so our chocolate is now ready. So let me grab another towel. I'm going to place it on top of the towel here. I don't want to place it directly on the counter. Um, we want to make sure we don't run the risk of damaging the counter, right? So I'm going to place it here and you can see how the chocolate has melted. Okay? So now I'm going to leave my spatula here on the side and then I'm just going to take my bananas and I'm actually going to do the scooping the chocolate and placing a little bit on top of the banana just to show you. Right? This is the way that we can do this. You can cover all of it. You can cover just part of it, like this one for example. I'm just going to leave a little tail of banana without any chocolate. Then we let it drip. Make sure you let it drip so that it doesn't make a big mess. And then we just place it onto our, place it onto our parchment paper. And this kind of chocolate is actually good for your health, dark chocolate. It has health benefits to our hearts, right? It has also what is known as antioxidants, which essentially they help us to fight off diseases and fight off different illnesses. So this is something that it's actually really good for you. So feel free to enjoy it with your family. Okay, so I'm just letting these drip. I'm going to make just a few to show you what they will look like, but again, the process as well is really important to so let it drip so you don't you don't have a big wad of chocolate coming off of your bananas and you don't make a big mess. Okay? One more. Now this is the other way that we can do it. We can just dip the banana into the bowl, cover it in chocolate as much as possible, use the spatula to cover any space that we can't reach with the banana. Right? Using the banana to reach that end. There is that, and we can leave it like that as well, okay? So I'm going to finish these later, but I wanted to show you what our bananas look like. So we are ready now to place our bananas in the freezer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. You want to leave your bananas in the freezer for about, say, a couple of hours, make sure that they get cold and the chocolate gets firm, and then you can eat them comfortably. So let's go ahead now and review what we learned about today. We talked about sugar. We talked about the sugar that we find in drinks. We talked about refined sugar. We talked also about sugar that we find in fruits and vegetables, <clears throat> excuse me, and how that sugar actually comes with a lot of nutrients, right? It's sugar that naturally occurs in foods, has a lot of nutrients, so that there, fruits and vegetables, is really good for us. We then went ahead and talked about the recommendation also for sugar, right? The recommendation being six little sugar cubes right here. And that's the recommendation for kids that are two to 18 years of age. And then lastly, we went ahead and made our chocolate covered bananas using dark chocolate, which was unsweetened. And so the only sugar that was in our dessert or snack or however you would like to enjoy your chocolate covered bananas 
would be the sugar that is naturally found in the bananas. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and that you learned a lot today. Thank you so much for joining me. We look forward to seeing you virtually again next week and at one of our resource centers as soon as we can. Until then, stay active, healthy, and informed.